and namaste. My name is Scott Wiseman. I am a travel enthusiast with a love for climbing mountains. You are about to follow me on my expedition to Mera Peak in the Himalayas of Nepal at a whopping 21,247 feet above sea level. It is considered the country's highest trekking peak. While it requires limited technical skills, it is still a mighty undertaking, considering it is higher than any mountain in North America. The summit of Mera was first reached by Colonel Jimmy Roberts and Sen Tenzing in 1953. Its summit awards one of the best views in all the Himalayas. The trek takes you through the spectacularly green Hiku Valley that gives way to moraine and windswept vistas in its higher reaches. Getting to the summit requires a steady ascent over days to give our bodies ample time to adjust to the thinner air and reduced oxygen levels. In our case, it was 11 days from the Lukla airport to the summit. A successful expedition in the Himalayas requires careful logistical planning. For my expeditions in Nepal, I chose Kathmandu-based company called Adventure High Mountain, whose founder Ang Gelgen Sherpa, who we refer to as Rinji, is an accomplished mountaineering guide with nine ascents of Everest and six of Amade Blom on his resume. Our lead guide to Mira was Rinji's brother-in-law, Ongdawa, who guides numerous peaks throughout the year in the Everest region. Rinji's nephew, Pasong Dawa, is a young, bright, up-and-coming guide who also accompanied us to Mera. The literal backbone of the expedition were our porters, who helped bring equipment from one location to the next. I'm very grateful for the hard work of Jay Kumar Ray and Sana Sherpa. Guillaume Stefan, an accomplished baker from the south of France, was my expedition mate. This would be his first expedition above 6,000 meters. Our journey began in the delightfully chaotic city of Kathmandu, where Hindu and Buddhist cultures collide. I started by exploring the city's many squares and temples and monuments. From here we took a three-hour bus ride to Ramachep, where we boarded a small plane en route to Lukla which is famous for having the scariest landing in the world. Its one way is limited to short takeoff and landing aircraft. The 17-minute flight offers superb views of Everest on a clear day. After landing in Lukla, we began the first leg of our trek along cobblestone walkways to Paya. While most parties opt to go over Zatra La Pass, a shorter but much more difficult route, we took a more southerly path which would bring us past Karakola, Rinji's home village, and where much of his family still lives. Now we're in uh, Paya, the first town. Stopped at the Beehive Lodge briefly. I think from here I'm guessing we have another 45 minutes to uh, to our stopping point for the day. It was the mountains that drew me to Nepal the first time, but it was my love for the people that drew me back the second time. It was an absolute highlight for me to see where my Sherpa friends are from, from the Karakola village. Here is a sweet little glimpse into what daily life is like.
All right, day three of trekking. Just woke up here in Bushpa at the Hotel Bupsa Inn Lodge and Restaurant. This is where we stayed last night. Today we're gonna to be going to Pangum. It's about four hours away. Gonna slowly but surely start heading up into the mountains. By tomorrow, we'll have a view of Mara Peak, our major objective for this trip. On our walk from Bushpa to Pangum, we enjoyed views of the terraced hillsides of Karakola with its schoolyard and monastery, crossing many cascading streams along the way. Tonight I'm staying in the Himalayan Trekkers Lodge and restaurant in Pangum. It's my third night along the trekking route and I'm gonna just take you on a little brief glimpse of the dormitories. Here's room 111 where I'll be sleeping. Got everything set up. Day four of trekking at Pangom. Uh, we're going to be going five hours to Remilo. Had a great view over Nimbur this morning. We stayed last night, had dinner. We continue up over this hill. While on our ascent to Pangong, we stopped at the monastery to pay respect to the mountains through puja ceremony and praying for our safe passage. Once we reached the pass, Angdala tied a white kata to a strand of prayer flags. It was given to us by Kipa as a farewell gesture, symbolizing a safe journey. Good luck. We are just entering the Hinku Valley now and got our first glimpse of Mary Peak. complete without rest stops and we enjoyed a lengthy stay at the Nagingshu Valley Lodge before a challenging steep push to the top of Ramilo. So we had Dalbat lunch and now hiking up this steep hot slog all the way towards Ramilo. There's no such thing as flat walking anywhere in Nepal. Up and down, up and down all day at these lower altitudes, say 10,000 feet south facing, it's actually quite hot. Perched on its own mountaintop, we enjoyed the perfect weather and the warm sunset to end the day. So far, we've traveled from Pangum to Rimailo. Today, we will descend to Tombo Kola, cross numerous streams, and ascend to Chetra Kola. The next day, we will push all the way to Kote, followed by another day to Tongnok, and then Kote. 
Barakai Camp, and finally the summit. Good morning from Ramilo, day five of the trek. Here's the inside of the uh, Valley View Lodge in Ramilo, where we had dinner last night. Packing up my room here, had a really awesome view overlooking where we were yesterday. Came all the way up from this valley. Our first part of the day is going to be a big descent. Walking for about two and a half hours from Hermilo. A little break. Arriving to the uh, Mara Riverside Lodge in Tuxercola. humble compared to some of the lodges, but comfortable nonetheless. It's my room. A lot of the day is actually spent resting. You uh, have a lot of really hard trekking, often five to seven hours a day. So by early afternoon, you get to your lodge, set up your bag, organize your room, and dinner time is around six, and then bedtime is usually around eight. Nine at the latest. Uh, I think we're going to be getting to Cote by tomorrow, where the other trekking route intersects. After that, could be more people, a little bit more activity. Here's a view of the jungle. A little different from what I expected. It'll be about a seven hour hike over to Kota today. So I'm going to be leaving in a, about a, an hour, hour and a half from now. Already packed up for another day and get going. Usual time, breakfast at 7, walking by 7.30. Five hours, time for lunch. All right, lunch time in Kote, Dalbat, and then macaroni. Yeah, 24 hour Dalbat. We are. Welcome to Mara Peak region. Always nice when you have a sign that is indicating where you want to go. There's Mara Peak. Little by little we will get there. The important Hindu holiday known as Diwali occurred while we stayed over in Kari. The festival symbolizes a spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. <laughs> Good morning from 
Cote, lots of activity with people getting ready, porters packing up. Today we left Cote, Cote, and we're going to Taknak, almost there I think. We're coming up along the west side of Mara Peak. Above the trees now, it's colder, windier. I'm gonna turn around a bit so you can see Mara. Right there. As we got closer to Tongnok, our path took us past a small prayer shrine. It was here I felt overcome by the magical feeling of being high in the Himalayas. <laughs> Taknak village. Quite a number of lodges. Be resting here for the night. Kind of cloudy. Might be clearing out soon. Today we woke up at the Oxygen Lodge in Tagnok. It is colder, windier, and drier here, and the feeling of being on a high mountain expedition is fully alive now. I'm feeling pretty good overall. Had some good rest in Tagnok. Three or four more days, we're gonna be at the top of Mera. Day eight of trekking. And now uh, today we are going up the moraine over here to Kare. This is the lake known as Sabide Show, which used to be much larger until much of the lake emptied after a terrible landslide. It remains an indescribably beautiful spot with surreal color. by the afternoon, and this would be the last major outpost before our summit push. It is absolutely imperative to build in rest days, so we used a day in Kari to rest in a comfortable lodge. Moving up an altitude too quickly increases the chances of becoming ill, with symptoms of mountain sickness appearing suddenly and without warning. Morning views from Kari. Mara Peak. Ready? Today is day nine already. Today we're mostly resting. Gonna do a little hiking to acclimatize. And uh, if all goes as planned in two days, well, two mornings from now, uh, we'll be on the summit, probably right around this time, if not a little bit earlier.
Here we are at day 10 of Mare Peak Expedition, and today we are going up to high camp. I think our bodies have had time to get pretty well adjusted, and uh, tomorrow will be the summit push from high camp to the summit, and then back down in one day. Everything that we've been preparing for the last couple of weeks uh, finally upon us. That little nub right there in the light is the actual summit. Here we are doing our walk up to base camp and then high camp. High camp's out of view right now. Base camp. Our group is going to be passing this to go up to high camp. We're going to be heading up the snow field. Okay, we are crampon point now. Changing boots, putting on crampons. The great view behind us. Just passed base camp a few minutes ago. Pasong putting on his crampons. slow process climbing a tall mountain. This is already day 10. Summit day is going to be day 11, including the day I flew into Lukla with my group. Lucky for us, until now, every every night has been in a, in a lodge. Hot meals prepared that we can order from a menu. But now, sipping out in the elements a little bit. But have all the gear to stay warm. But uh, needless to say, there's always a little bit of uncomfortableness involved and climbing mountains, especially that wake up for the summit push when all you want to do is stay in your warm cocoon. But the desire for the summit has to be uh, stronger than your your desire to just stay warm and sleep. <laughs> so yeah, mountain climbing is a test of tolerance. But then again, we have such amazing support with the porters and the Sherpa uh, communities here that really makes it very attainable. All right, well, Mara Peak Summit, early, early morning tomorrow. Well, here we go. Uh, summit day. I don't think I'm ever going to fall in love with waking up in the pitch darkness and going out in the freezing cold to go climb a mountain, but um, <laughs> it's part of the game. And uh, once the sun peaks out after you've been climbing for hours, it's a magical moment and uh, thoroughly looking forward to today, despite feeling really comfortable right now, not really wanting to get up, but uh, 
here we go. October 30th, summit of Mara Peak. Got up here at 5.30, started at 1.40. Congratulations, Pasong Dawa. Congratulations, Guillaume. So I'm talking very loud. There's Everest, Mochi, Makaloo. Don't regret anything. Whatever you dream of. After reaching the top of Mera, we descended back down the north slopes, back to high camp where we had a brief rest before continuing on to base camp. Instead of retracing our steps back to Kari, we ventured east from Merala into the remote Hongu Valley. Over the next days, we would cross Amphalopsa Pass, but this will all be the topic for another video. I want to extend my thanks to Adventure High Mountain and Rinji Sherpa for organizing this adventure of a lifetime. You can find a link to his website in this video's description. Thanks for watching and tune in for more.